What is up everybody? My name is Imani LaRussa. I hope you're having an amazing new year so far. One of my new year's resolutions was to make more YouTube tutorials. And I hope one of your new year's resolutions was to watch more of my YouTube tutorials. So let's help each other out and let's hop right into it. Today I'm going to show you a really cool process of turning a 2D image into a 3D environment just in After Effects. So all you will need is Photoshop and After Effects for this tutorial. So this technique that I'm going to show you is a technique that I learned years ago from the amazing After Effects god Andrew Kramer from Video Copilot. But this tutorial that I'm going to do for you is a more in-depth tutorial. The goal is to really sell a 3D environment just made up of 2D images and we're going to be able to use a 3D camera inside of it. All right, so let's start off with getting a high resolution photo. You want to make sure that this file is high resolution because this is going to be stretched and pulled and we don't want it to be pixelated. So you could grab your image and drag it into new composition and there we'll make it the same dimensions as your picture. Next, we're going to create a new camera. Make sure it's 24 millimeter lens, which is a wide angle lens. Remember, 50 millimeter lens is the closest focal length to a human eye, so the most realistic to what we see. So if we go half, it's kind of like gauges. It's a lot wider when the number is smaller. Next, we're gonna create a spotlight. Go to layer, new, light. So just so you understand what everything does, the intensity is how bright it's going to be. The cone angle is how wide it's going to be. The cone feather is the fall off of the light. The fall off is gonna be like the harshness around the edges. So if you want it to be really harsh edges, you want no fall off. Cast shadows is pretty explanatory. Shadow darkness is how dark do you want the shadows to be and diffusion is that softness like the fall off. But I'm gonna be honest, I don't really mess with the shadow diffusion and the shadow darkness. I really don't see a change with the light, but I could be wrong. You wanna set your intensity to 100, your cone to 180 degrees, your cone feather to 50%, and you need to make sure that your fall off is set to none. Also make sure that your cast shadows is checked. Then set your shadow darkness to 100 and your shadow diffusion to zero. Hit OK, then go to create a new solid. Make it white, make comp size, then hit OK. Then next, make the solid 3D. And because we made it 3D, we can now see the spotlight is affecting the layer. So I'm gonna just turn that off for now. And what we're gonna do is align the planes of this solid to the environment that is in our 2D image to make it look 3D. And now I'm just gonna rotate this to fit the bottom of the floor of this picture. You can hit the hotkey W for the rotation tool, or you could go up to the top and click on the rotation tool there. So I'm just gonna rotate the X axis and then bring this down on the Z axis. And the thing is, you don't wanna bring it down so far on the Z axis to where the light doesn't hit it. So the sides of the edges are kind of overlapping the walls on the left and right. So I could just scrunch that over with just grabbing the edges and scaling it in. Then I'm gonna relabel this layer to floor so that we don't get confused. Next, I'm gonna duplicate the floor layer and rotate it on the Y axis to make it fit on the left side. And I'm gonna do this process on the right side as well. So when you're doing this, you really wanna go in there and just kind of finesse the edges. Like you're creating this room with layers, but definitely don't feel afraid to stretch out these layers instead of just moving them in all the different axes. Axes, axes, axes. See, now with the spotlight, we got a little bit more dimension in there. Now we are going to duplicate the right and make it a back layer. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you turn on the two views horizontal. And what this is gonna do is give you two camera angles side by side. So I have my active camera on the right and on the left, I'm gonna set it to the top. So if you could imagine a camera facing downwards so that we could see the very top of it. So we're just gonna move this back layer all the way to the back and now we can see it's a lot easier because we're looking from the top of all of the layers. So I'm just gonna move this all the way back on the Z axis and make sure that it's perfectly aligned with all the other layers. I'm going to relabel these so that I do not get confused. So now that I have all of my 3D layers aligned to the walls of the image, we're gonna need to copy the position of the camera and paste it on the position of the spotlight. Once you copied and paste the position, next we're gonna move to the original image and make that 3D. 
And we also want to paste the position of the camera onto the image, but we don't want it to be exactly on top of the camera in the spotlight. We want it to be a little bit in front of it. And that's because we're gonna use this image to project it on the walls that we aligned in the back, similar to how you would put an image on a projector and it projects on a wall. And because we just moved this image so close to the camera, we now have to scale it down to its normal size. So now if we move the camera around, we could see that this 3D environment's working out, but our image isn't being casted behind it. And that's because we need to change some of the settings. Go to the material options on your image. You could hit AA for the hotkey. Next, set your cast shadows to only, not just off or on, it needs to be set to only. And what you're doing is you're telling the material of our image that we just want you to be projected. We don't actually wanna see you, kinda like a side chick and set your light transmissions to 100. What light transmission does is it allows how much of the image is being projected through this shot. So how much of this light is being shown through this image? So if we go back to the metaphor of the projector, if the light on the projector is at 0%, there's nothing that's going to be casted in. But if it's at 100% and the light is shining all the way through, then the image will be projected in the back. So we're getting there, but as you can see, it's too dark. And that's because the layers are still affected by this light because they're all 3D layers and all 3D layers are affected by light. But we could turn this off by going inside the material options of our layers and turning off accept lights. So now I can move this 3D camera in this 3D environment. One thing I did notice is that I had both my left and right side a little too far from my ground layer and some of the objects are being distorted. So I'm just gonna go in and fix it to where the left and right layers don't overlap these objects to the floor. So now I could move my camera on the Z axis and push in. And because I want it to seem like it's a handheld video, I'm going to add a small wiggle expression on the orientation of the camera. Alt click on the stopwatch on orientation and enter a small wiggle of 0.5 and one. So now we have a functioning 3D world where we can use a 3D camera in After Effects, but we are going to go a little bit further with selling this 3D world. We're gonna take some of the elements of this scene, take them out and put them back into this 3D world so that they react with the camera and add more dimension to it. This is where we're gonna pop into Photoshop. So let's open up the original image in Photoshop instead of creating a new Photoshop file, cause we wanna make sure the dimensions are the same because we're just gonna replace the old file with this new file. Once your photo's in, you wanna analyze it and look at all the elements that you could move to add more dimension. So I see these signs and I wanna take them out. So I'm gonna use my pen tool and just mark around this sign. Once I finish, I'm gonna hit selection. I'm gonna hit okay to make a selection. Then I'm gonna hit command J so that it duplicates the layer, but only what's in my selection but I need to replace the background of the sign because I can't just have the original image because a sign is there. And if I keep it there, then it's gonna look like two signs in front of each other. So on the original background image, I'm just gonna use the content fill aware tool and the clone stamp tool to just get some of the textures of the background to fill in the edges of this sign. Because we don't need to replace the whole thing, we just need to replace it enough to where if we do move the sign, you can't see the background, which is the original sign. Another thing to note is if you have like living things like people or animals in the scene, I would just suggest cutting them out completely. Because we're kind of faking this 3D world and trying to make it look like a video, it's not gonna make sense if people are completely static in a still photo if we're moving in 3D space. So I went ahead and took all of the signs out and everything that I wanted to move in the final. And now we could bring this back in After Effects. So we're gonna go to the original image in our project and replace the file with the Photoshop file. And because we have the same dimensions, nothing should change outside of the fixes that we made in Photoshop. And now we're gonna import all the individual items that we took out and bring them into our composition. And we're gonna place these things exactly where we took them out. So we need to make them 3D so that we could work with them in 3D space. And oh, the image is being projected onto our 3D images. So is our light because all 3D layers are affected by lights. So we just need to change the settings to accept 
shadows off and accept lights off because we don't want the projection to be on there and we don't want the light to affect it. So now let's look at our top view and place the signs exactly where they were in the original image. And now I'm gonna add a small Gaussian blur onto these signs just so it blends a little bit better with our background. Because we stretched and pulled this image so much, you could slightly see a little blur on it, but not enough to where it's gonna look bad. And that's gonna be it. Thank you so much guys for your support. I'm hoping to make a whole bunch of tutorials this year, so stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed. And I super appreciate the support. Thank you so much guys.